So yesterday, someone asked me if I could make them a tutorial on how to draw heads, right? And I thought it would be perfect if I were to do that, but I'm going to change up a little bit. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on doing heads. That's why the video title probably won't say a tutorial on how to draw heads. It is specifically um, advice I'm going to be giving you. And there are two reasons why. Um, he specifically wanted heads on like a tutorial on angles and how to draw heads at difficult angles, right? And in my opinion, there are so many videos out there that explain that concept a lot better than I can. In fact, so you don't go on a search, I will give you two of the ones that helped me the most. One by Mark Burnett and one by Ori Days. One, Ori Days is more focused on anime anatomy and stuff like that. So if you want to watch more anime style stuff, watch him first. But they relatively go over um, a lot of techniques that you can use to draw angles at difficult heads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you a specific method that I draw in angled heads from, and maybe you can take that method and experiment yourself and decide if my method is for you or not, right? Because I think that's a lot more valuable than regurgitating information that you can find out easily. I have a problem with a lot of art tutorials because it feels like a lot of them say the same exact information, and it's really hard to find unique information that could actually help you rather than being the same from every single one. It seems like every single one is the same, and they just copy and paste the information saying it slightly differently, right? So I don't want to add more to that. I'm going to give you some unique information that hopefully is helpful to you. And if this isn't a video that you're looking for, uh, whoever commented, I'm sorry. I didn't want. Uh, I just thought that this would be a lot better um, because I don't want to just tell you more of the same. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful to you. If it is, then give me a like. That's about it. And the reason why this picture is on your screen right now, um, the one that I just drew a while ago, I just wanted to use it in the thumbnail, so I'm leaving in the video for the first intro. So yeah, hey! <laughs> um, if you wanna see it, it's on my Instagram, uh, if you would like it's in the description. So, let's just jump into it. Mm -mm, not this one, where is it? Okay, sure, we'll just use, now we use this. Okay, so, in a tutorial, in to draw heads they probably told you to use two different shapes right either you use a circle or you use a cube right one or the other and even though both of these methods are very valid i personally think that if you're only using one or the other you are heavily limiting yourself on how to draw heads at different angles because both of these shapes have their strengths but both of them Sorry, I just ate. <laughs> Both of them also have a glaring weakness. And I'll explain it to you. So, the weakness of the cube is that it looks nothing like an actual person. I hate using uh, ge geometric shapes for construction. So, tell me why, if you're drawing a human body, which is a fluid, round, spherical shape with a bunch of tubes and stuff like that, why are you using an unnatural shape such as a cube that is not produced in nature? It is a hard-edged, straight-edged, flat surface, 90-degree angle, perfect cube. It makes no sense that if you're drawing something like that, your outcome will not be something blocky. All right? So, I tend to not use the cube in that purpose. I tend to use the circle. Right? A circle is a more natural, rounder shape that looks closer to your end goal, which is, in this case, ahead so don't use a cube for construction use a circle but the cube still has a function and i'll show you through example i'm going to mark the sphere of north east south and west i'm going to mark the cube with north east south and west now if i were to give this sphere a little spin like a beyblade and you were to look at the sphere and I asked you, point to where north, east, south, and west are exactly about any markings on it. Could you tell me? No. Because no matter what direction you're looking at the sphere, it always looks like a circle. It will always look like a circle and give you the bare minimum information. All right. Now, some people say you can add, like, if you're drawing the head, some people can add, like, a little flat surface like that to imagine that it's cut off, or you can add, like, little lines. But to me, there's no point in adding it to such an ambiguous shape when there's already a perfect shape out there that tells direction a lot better. Look at the cube a corner pointing for the north, a flat plane pointing to the east, another flat plane to the west, a line in the middle to divide the two planes, and a corner at the bottom to do south. There's so many more landmarks on a cube. Why not use it for direction? Why not use a cube to show information about the direction they're facing, the angle they're facing at, right? Because you can draw a cube in so many different angles. So imagine if a sphere is in the middle, and I want to draw a sphere looking up. It looks like this. I want to draw a sphere looking down. It looks like this. 
it's a sphere it's a circle regardless of what way you're looking at it so if i were to draw a head front facing oh look it's a square if i were to draw a cube up facing oh it it looks different it looks different it looks like there's like if you want to draw a cube down facing oh my gosh it actually changes shape so you can easily tell which way the cube is facing and then you can shade it very simple cross hatching without having to do any blending this is why you use a cube for this purpose so my tip for you and i'll show you some more examples the video's not going to end yet but if you want to click off now the main tip is that if you are going to draw a head combine the two here's an example i'm going to show you a better example this one right here if you're having difficulty finding the angle draw a cube on the outer area first draw a cube first to determine the direction all right whatever plane that you choose right whatever plane that you choose to be on is where the face will be on any other plane will tell you the top of the head and the side of the face then after that's done, you go to a new layer, lower the opacity of the cube, and then you draw a circle on the middle, right? The circle is in where you add your actual guidelines, the line in the middle, the horizontal line, the lines where you draw the eyes, the eyebrows and the mouth. That's because it is a round shape that's more accurate to a head, all right? So the cube serves its function as only an information giver, an informational aid, a visual aid for information. And the circle is what you draw upon because it is a closer representation to what the head will eventually look like. So that is what my advice is, is to combine both the cube and the sphere instead of limiting yourself to one or the other. All right. So now, just so you won't be too confused, I'm going to quickly, very quickly, because I don't want this to be too long, draw a head from a because i just showed you a three quarter angle i'll show a i'll draw a head looking down or kind of all right so if i want to draw a head looking down i draw a cube that's looking down because i know what a cube looked down is if you don't know the direction of the cube you can look on pinterest and you can find a bunch of angled cubes in sort of a graph like like a graph like a visual aid you'll find them in pinterest all the time all right, I have my cube, boom, right? This is where I'm going to place the head. This is where she's gonna be looking down, all right? You can even draw like a little arrow if you want, looking down, all right? But if I, okay. And then you lower the opacity, add a new one, and then you draw a circle in the middle. That fits pretty well, all right? There you go. <clears throat> then, you do your lines. Now you know this is the top of the head. See, there's a line right here that tells you where the, where the top of the head kind of ends. And then you have your circle down like that. Then you have your line that tells you where the eyes are going to be. And then you can extend the line. The line in the middle extends to how far you want the head to be. You draw its lines, its chin, have it connect. And then you start going in on the face and that's it very simple like that right i mean i could uh, i'm not gonna do that because i don't i use a lot more guys than that but <laughs> that's just uh, it's just a close help right now so something of the sort right everything is there everything works something like this right and then eventually you'll get something like this right it helps so that's overall the video. I want to make something short and sweet for you. That wouldn't be too confusing. And hopefully it wasn't. So I try not to be as confusing as possible. Uh, if this isn't the guide you're looking for, then I'm sorry whoever left the comment. But overall, when drawing the angle of a head, what matters is that you want to make sure that the direction is visually clear. Because if it's not visually clear, like using like a sphere, you're gonna have a harder time when you draw the chin, the placement of the of the, the ch of the chin bone kind of going up, the skull, right? All of that jazz, you're gonna have a lot of confusion, and it's gonna be disproportionate because you don't know where it's gonna be, where it's gonna look. Okay, and finally, just a couple more tidbits is that I'm gonna show you a sticky note that I have. I always keep this sticky note near me. This is actually just the anime that I want to watch. I already finished it. This is an old note. But I always keep this near, all right? 
when a character is looking up so if you're looking up to a character right so her chin is closer to you the chin is flatter it is a lot straighter all right so the chin going from your chin and the bone going up like your jaw going up to your ear is flatter if you're looking down at a character meaning her head is closer to you then the face the jawline will look sharper it will be quicker all right and that's my final tip so that's all i'm going to give you today hopefully that's a lot that's that's helpful to get you started on drawing the head angles all right because i believe that guidelines are everything so i'm going to show you a, uh, an advice on guidelines all right so use spheres and use squares and then make sure those two rules and you should be good to go you can look at other videos for face mapping on all that jazz but i don't think i'm very good at that yet because i still mess up a lot so i'm not going to give any advice on that yet but hopefully this is helpful to you and hopefully this gets you to understand what i'm talking about and if you like it please give me a like if you don't and you you disagree with me then go in the comments and tell me why i actually replied to everything i don't think i've ever missed replying to a comment before so i hope you go down and give me a discussion and tell me what i did wrong what you think is wrong and maybe i can explain a little bit more in the comments especially if you're confused if you're confused on anything please comment and i will explain myself so have fun. I hope you enjoy. This isn't going to be the only video of the week. I'm going to have another video coming out soon. So take good care and I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.